Have you ever felt as though your purpose isn't good enough or that the impact you're creating isn't actually big enough? Join me and my client, Rose Kirby, as we discuss the judgment surrounding purpose and impact. In this episode, you'll learn the difference between macro and micro impact and why neither is better than the other. You'll also learn the correlation between meaning and impact and the importance of community and accountability for purpose-driven entrepreneurs and leaders. Rose Kirby is a leadership coach and business strategist to millennials on a mission. She's a member of the Forbes Coaches Council and speaker and host of the Facebook group Millennial Impact Makers. As an advocate for the millennial generation, Rose is dedicated to helping those ready to do something bigger to grow and monetize their mission and become recognized leaders while creating a meaningful impact. Unlike the corporate notion of leadership, Rose believes in igniting leadership within the millennials to carve their own path, even when it's different to everyone else's, and to inspire others to take action beyond what they would have ordinarily taken. This conversation is part of my special 10-episode client feature where I'm featuring incredible clients who inspire me. If you're interested in working with me, a great place to start would be my Unleashed and Unapologetic program. Head to rubyframon.com forward slash Unleashed to sign up. Today's episode is sponsored by the Mayfair Hotel and Eve American Bistro in downtown Los Angeles, home of my annual three-day event, Amplified Soul Live. The 2019 event takes place February 22nd to the 24th. For info and tickets, head to rubyframon.com forward slash ASL. All the links will be in the show notes. Now, it is time to continue this 10-episode client feature with Rose Kirby. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with another incredible client who inspires me. Rose, welcome to today's Thought Leader. Super excited to have you here. Thank you. You're excited as well. Thank you for having me. Um, So one of the things I love about you is that you're really here to support millennials on a mission. Um, And it's so important because I mean, that obviously fits in with the rise of the new generation of thought leaders. You're here to support these millennials who are on a mission, but it wasn't always that way for you, correct? (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason that I love supporting those people is because that's been my story, I guess. Um, Yeah, around a year or so ago, I found myself in a situation where I was so out of alignment with what I felt like I was here to do and um that actually led to an episode of burnout in the end (laughs) because I think when you're so not aligned with your values with um your potential and your purpose I didn't realize at the time but that was leading to a really bad mental place for me and I was in the wrong environment for, for that um So yeah, that's why I'm incredibly passionate about supporting those that really know that they're here to do something so much bigger, but they're just trying to figure out what is that exactly and how do I make it happen? Yeah. Um, I love that you mentioned that um, being out of alignment was one of the things that really uh, led you in the direction of burnout because I think a lot of people don't realize that we get burnt out um, or experience high levels of anxiety or Um, overwhelm when we're not in alignment. And a lot of people don't know what that um, means. So for you specifically in that point in time, I mean, you're saying that you were in a space of not being aligned in your corporate job. And now as an entrepreneur, you're feeling super aligned. Mm -hmm. Um, Want you tell our listeners a little bit about that so you can give them some insights on what that actually looks like? Mm, Yeah, sure. So I think there were two key pieces here for me. The first was around my purpose and the impact I was making. And the second was around my potential. So the first was around, so just kind of stepping back and thinking about the impact I was making at that time. And I was in a job where we talked about impact all the time, the clients and like what difference we're making. It was at a corporate level. It was at a very like um, C-suite type level of impact yet I didn't find that meaningful Mm. and I really struggled to voice that um, because I felt like I would be incredibly judged by that Mm -hmm. and um, 
yeah, to kind of turn around and say, hey, actually, I don't find this work meaningful. Right. <laughs> kind of feels a bit controversial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was hard. Um, and actually, as I kind of thought more about that, I realized the kind of impact I do care about is not the macro big picture, let's save loads of money or impact huge populations. It's about the much deeper individual level impact where I'm helping somebody in their life literally one-on-one um and that took a long time for me to a, admit to myself and then admit to the people around me that's why I wasn't feeling so good mm. um, and then the second piece being around the potential and feeling like I wasn't using my strengths and I don't know if you've ever felt like this as well but feeling like you're leaving your own potential on the table because you're not really using all the strengths that you've, you've been gifted with right and that's so frustrating particularly for somebody who likes to feel like they're growing the whole time and you're learning and that yeah. you want to achieve and actually to feel stuck in this kind of cycle of i'm just operating at 50 percent of who i could be was so right. depressing yeah so. I, I and i think a lot of people who are on the fence of leaving their corporate jobs to step into entrepreneurship, probably experience um, some of that or a combination of those things, Mm -hmm. um, especially the potential piece. But what I found interesting that you just mentioned about purpose and impact is the macro impact um, Mm -hmm. versus like, I guess we could just call it micro impact, right? (laughs) Because there is this weird judgy feeling Mm -hmm. in our industry and, and I felt this too, Rose, and I'm still deciphering whether or not that judginess mm-hmm. is just my own shit or if it's like actually other people judging, right? <laughs> like your mission isn't big enough. It's not imp- impacting the world. So mm-hmm. that means therefore it is not important mm-hmm. versus like someone else who is fundraising and supporting um, you know, water for Africa. It feels bigger. You know, it's, it's different. And, and there's this weird judginess that comes um, between macro impact and micro impact. So mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, big time. Because um, a couple of years ago, I was working on a project where we were increase, helping to increase the financial inclusion of women across the world. I mean, how wow. freaking awesome does that sound? That was right. like great. And okay, it might be my most favorite project during the time I was in that company. But at the end of the day, I didn't get to see it. I didn't get to like, it was just a document at the end of the day. It was just conversations. It wasn't actually really hitting home for me. Mm -hmm. And to kind of turn around and say, hey, that sounds great. But actually, this is not floating my boat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There's a lot of internal judgment. You're so right. There's so much like judging us on yourself about that. Um, and actually the idea of just working with, let's say 20 people in a given year, but having a much deeper impact into their life and really seeing that for myself and being able to respond to what they need right there and then is so much more meaningful to me. Um, but I know a lot of people in my life just didn't get that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So you're saying a lot of people in your life, like people were judging you or they in their own lives weren't really seeing um, the difference between micro and macro impact. I think I felt judged by the people around me probably 80% of the time because I was judging myself for that because yeah, it feels wrong to say, Hey, macro doesn't, okay. It's great, but like it doesn't fit with me right now. And maybe that will change. I don't know. But seeing the the one-to-one impact for me is just, it's so much more powerful and more meaningful. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's get real like impact is impact no matter what right whether it's on the scale of impacting a million lives or it's on the scale of impacting one life and i think Mm -hmm. as coaches especially in the online space it's really easy for us to get caught up in the desire to impact more because we see number one people around us doing that and number two Mm -hmm. Um, that judginess of like, but this doesn't feel like I'm chasing something big enough. Mm -hmm. And yet if we're all to go at this from a macro level, um, there's going to be some people missed. And um, the micro level work, which I really resonate with Rose, and I think Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our listeners could resonate with this. There is a sense of relief when you can say, you know what, I actually resonate more with this micro level work 
it aligns more with my gifts and who mm-hmm. I am and who I really want to serve. So when you made that realization and dropped into the work that you do today, which is mm-hmm. very impactful, and if we wanted to label it, we'd call it the micro impact, right? Yeah. Um, when you landed into that, was it like an immediate, ah, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do? Or was it like a process? <laughs> so I'll tell you what happened. Okay. I, <laughs> this is going to be I, good because she's already laughing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I left my job without a plan. I had no idea what was going to happen next. All I knew is that I literally had to, and it sounds kind of cliched, but I needed to lose sight of the shore to then realize what else was available, what else was out there. Mm. And I felt like I was so limited by the thinking that was around me in my previous role that I just needed to get out of it a little bit. Mm. And so I left and I I trusted myself. I think that was the thing. It takes a lot of self-trust to just say, sod it. I'm going to go for it. And I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm going to let things evolve. Mm -hmm. And I trust that it's going to be okay because I can Mm -hmm. figure stuff out as I go. It's okay. And it took a lot of self-discovery to figure out that actually the micro impact was what I wanted to pursue. And it took a lot of reflection. And I think actually there was a, a certain point in my life where I was working with individuals. It was in Kenya. It was with entrepreneurs. It was when I think about the times of my life where I was at I felt like I was making a really meaningful impact and at my best, it was during that time. And that's kind of what I sat back with. I thought, actually, hang on, looking at my life so far, if I'm going to go and find the experiences that are so meaningful to me and um, where I feel like I'm operating at my best, it was during that time. So how can I recreate that? How can I do more of that now? How can I build on that and build on that and build on that? And that's why I ended up here. <laughs> So that's how I went. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest to people just like quit their jobs and then right. run off. <laughs> right. But it, it was just the right timing for me. It, it, was, it was the right timing. Yeah. Um, so really you were following the feeling uh, yeah. of what you experienced. And what's interesting to me, because you can, you've said this a few times now, is um, that for you, there's a real correlation between meaning and impact. And yeah. Um, yeah. I believe this too. And I don't think enough people recognize that correlation and how the two are related Mm -hmm. because we can create impact in a multitude of ways, right? All of which are probably available to us, but the way in which we create impact as an individual best is when we pursue something that feels like it's meaningful to us. Mm -hmm that's the alignment piece. So, so true. Yeah. To feel like, yeah, whatever you're doing is so meaningful. Of course, you're going to be so much better at it. You're you're in the right place. You're doing the right thing. Um, And I think that's what I needed to just escape from when I left my job without a plan Mm -hmm. and to figure out, and like you said, follow the feeling, follow Mm -hmm. the feeling because like it's the only North star you've got really. (laughs) Yeah. And that feeling of, um, Landing on something that feels meaningful, I think it's also important to discuss that what's meaningful to you may not be meaningful to me and what's meaningful to me may not be meaningful to you. So talk to us a bit about that. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that the beauty of it though? Like, I love that to say that, yeah, like we're going to be different over what we define as meaningful. Um, I don't think I've managed to put into words yet what I find meaningful. I think it's just too much like a feeling. You can't Mm. almost describe it Mm -hmm. um I guess it's kind of the intersection between where you feel like you're at your best and you're using your gifts and you're using your strengths and where you feel like you're making a positive impact in some way that matters to you maybe that's where the intersection is for meaningfulness but I should go write a book about that one (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean it and the it's like one of those, I think it's one of those things that deters people from moving forward too, is um, it's, so I'm just going to say it how I, I'm thinking it, and mm-hmm. this is going to be super blunt, but I think a lot of people think that their purposes aren't good enough. Mm. And everything that you've been saying so far about, you know, macro versus micro impact, the meaningfulness and, and what's actually meaningful to you versus like everyone else or someone else. 
I feel like a lot of people get stuck in the piece around like, oh, my purpose doesn't feel big enough or my, my purpose doesn't feel good enough. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's that a lot of people don't know what their purpose is. I think a lot of people know what their purpose is or have an idea of what it is, mm-hmm. but they judge themselves because they don't feel like it's big enough or good enough or as big as so-and-so's or it's not going to get them where they want to be, whatever, it, you know, bullshit arises mm-hmm. in their minds. Um, did you at any point feel that? about yourself or your purpose? Um, yes, I think I did. And the weird thing was um, I had this pretty vivid dream and I didn't really have vivid dreams. <laughs> and it, <laughs> and um, there was somebody there telling me, you need to dream bigger. Mm-hmm. And I said this to my mom the next day. I'm like, yeah, that's something happened last night. And she's like, so, so what do you need to dream bigger about? And I'm like, what do you need to do? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, since something needs to be bigger here. And it's difficult because yeah, there are sometimes times where you you do just want to focus in on your purpose and allow yourself mm-hmm. to well just give yourself that permission mm-hmm. to go for what you want. And you don't know where you'll end up. You kind of you have that purpose, you start down that track like just like I did, and you don't know what's gonna happen next. So mm-hmm. judging yourself about it right now isn't gonna get you anywhere, it's just gonna keep you mm-hmm. stuck. Right. So taking that leap forwards is kind of just the first step. Right. And so to our listeners, what does that actually look like? Like, let's make it super tangible for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it depends on where they are. So let's imagine that somebody is wanting to like, what, confirm their purpose and take sure, a first let's step. do that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can do all the different types. We can, we can do all of them. <laughs> we, can, we can hit up our whole audience here. Okay. So <laughs> let's start with that. Let's start with that. Okay. So if you're wanting to figure out what is your purpose and just kind of confirm that. Um, a couple of really helpful questions that I asked myself um, was when, when has been the, a time when I've been the most fulfilled and what was I doing there? Why did I feel so fulfilled? Um, another, another thing that was really helpful that I asked myself was around what can I talk about all day? So what am I kind of secretly passionate about? <laughs> like you're just talking to people about all day and kind of asking yourself these questions really helps with figuring out what am I so excited about? What do I love to um, see the future in and, and all those sorts of questions. And that will hopefully lead you to something more tangible over, okay, what's my purpose here? Yeah. Um, and then in terms of making the next steps, there's a bit of an experimentation that has to happen, I think, at the end of the day. I you love kind of, that you said that. <laughs> yeah, you kind of just have to start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and whatever feels next, whatever feels like the most kind of, yeah, follow your nose and just go with whatever feels right next. But there has to be an experimentation um, almost constantly or you're getting, you're thinking about the feedback that you're getting from that experimentation and just kind of refining as you go along. Yeah. Um, people are scared to experiment because they're scared to fail ultimately. Um, right. Which, yeah, so common. So yeah. <laughs> Failure is very common. I'm, yeah. This is, uh, what Rose just shared goes along with my spaghetti um, analogy that I use a lot. And it's like, you just got to throw some fucking spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. Otherwise you're yeah. never going to know if you're just going to hold that bowl of spaghetti, you'll never know if it's going to mm-hmm. stick or not. And those questions are super, super insightful um, to just help get people on the right path. So what about those who, who perhaps they recognize their purpose. Um, but for whatever reason, they're holding themselves back from actually Mm -hmm. stepping into it. Like we've got a millennial, um, they know that they have a mission, um, but they're, they're holding back. Yeah. Okay. Two things I think, um, is really key here. And I think the first is community Mm. and the second is accountability. Mm. And that's one of the really, well, two, obviously two big reasons why I jumped into the UNU program with you because I knew I needed that. I knew I needed to, um, have that, those people around me that are also pursuing their purpose, pursuing their mission, their passion. Um, and I'm struggling with it as well. And it's part of the journey and to be around those people is so important. So having the community there is so powerful. Um, and then the second piece, the accountability. Yeah. So when you've got a community, you've got accountability typically. And, um, the conversations that we have in the you and you Facebook group with you um, and on the calls and that kind of thing is, is key to you 
keeping yourself moving forwards the whole time because it's so easy to just get stuck and um, talk yourself out of things. Mm. So yeah, that's why I jumped into the program. It made total sense for me. Um, and yeah, I'm so glad I did. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> I'm so I did. Glad you did too. Um, our paths got to connect and yeah, yeah, community is really crucial. And uh, it was something that I learned very early on in uh, my career as a coach is like, I really want to surround myself with people who I can have these conversations with mm-hmm. and um, about purpose and about evolution and about leadership and they get me and mm-hmm. they see me and people who actually see my vision. Because I think um, when we're outside of these circles, not everyone sees and honors our purpose and holds mm-hmm. it up there for, for us the way in which we do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And when you surround yourself with like-minded people, all of a sudden you have people who, number one, they see your vision and your purpose and they're going to hold it up there with you. And number mm-hmm. two, they're going to support you in moving in that direction and bringing that purpose to life because they understand, they get it. They're on the same journey with their own mission and purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. And I didn't feel like I had those people around me at all. I thought, right, I need to go cultivate them. And you and you was the complete answer to that for me. It really was. Um, And I remember having a conversation um, with my boyfriend and then something came up for me and I jumped straight into that Facebook group and did a live because I just, (laughs) who's going to get this? It's going to be them. (laughs) 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 It's going to be the only people that, um, understand this like struggle in my head right now and mm-hmm. um yeah you need that around you otherwise you you just do sit stay stuck and um yeah I'm just really thankful for, for the people that are in that group for this right mm-hmm. now yeah and it's also um you know the other reason why I feel like community is so important is um and this is straight from personal experience sometimes it doesn't feel that safe to be super vulnerable um mm-hmm. in public like on social media Uh, because our profiles are seen by way more people than just our friends and to share something super vulnerable about what it is that we're going through or experiencing as an entrepreneur, as a leader, um, it doesn't feel safe. And Mm -hmm. so for me, like having containers where I can go and not worry about being judged or um, being ripped apart or, you know, people saying shit to me, uh, And instead, knowing that whatever I bring into that container is going to be held and supported and I might, I might get a loving kick in the ass to get in the right direction. But, and and I think that's what a lot of people are missing. Um, Because Mm -hmm. let's face it, I mean, you, you were, you lived in the world of corporate and now in the world of purpose. And I think that there is a massive difference in the mindset of someone who is strictly corporate Mm -hmm. versus like a purpose-driven entrepreneur. Like, there is a, like our synapses work differently. I don't know what it is, but we're just like on this different wavelength and, you know, one isn't better than the other, but it's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's why I just had to get out of there and just, yeah, like I said, lose side of the shore, get away from the thinking that was holding me back. I felt, Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm going to find the people that are doing what I'm wanting to be doing and going to surround myself with the right community. So yeah, I totally get that. Totally agree. Yeah. I think there are people, I mean, I'm obviously still friends with all the people that I was working with not Uh too long ago and having conversations with them is fascinating as yeah, you just, your synapses are different. I think you might have a theory there. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm not a neurologist, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but yes, I feel like something just works different. Um, (laughs) Rose, we are nearing the end of this episode. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with our thought leaders today? I think I'm going to say clarity is queen. And the reason I'm going to say that is because clarity is the biggest struggle, I think, for a thought leader when you're first stepping forward and probably later on as well. And the fight for clarity is so important to be able to get yourself moving forwards. So yeah, clarity is queen, not king, because obviously we're girls, so we're going to be queens. <laughs> so for the men listening, you can swap out queen for king. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, well, Rose, thank you so much for being on this episode of today's Thought Leader. Why don't you tell our listeners where they can um, stalk you online? <laughs> yes, um, rosekirby.com. 
is, it is what it says on the tin. And uh, I'm on Instagram, but I don't use it so much. I'm more of a Facebook girl, which okay. feels a little bit archaic now. So yeah, I'm also on Facebook. You can find me, Rose Kirby. <laughs> okay, awesome. I will share those links in the show notes. Um, thank you so much, Rose. I appreciate you. Thank you. And you to too. our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on this special client feature on today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as the inspired Hiring client interviews continue. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the U and U program that Rose is in, please head to rubyfermon.com forward slash unleashed. And don't forget to check out Amplified Soul Live so you can spend three days with me in Los Angeles in February. The link for that is rubyfermon.com forward slash ASL. If you have any questions about today's episode for myself or for Rose, please reach out to us on social media. This episode was sponsored by the Mayfair Hotel and Eve American Bistro, home of ASL 2019. I will see you all back here tomorrow for another special episode of today's Thought Leader.